So your your diploma has five main modules: emotion, engagement, meaning, relationships, and goals. And you bring many theories of positive psychology together in each of those modules. Uh, way too many to even attempt to mention on this podcast. <laughs> But I thought we could touch on each of them and maybe share a little and, and see if they relate to Ikigai. So the, the first one is emotion, and I guess that's more specifically positive emotion. And I'd like to quote you, the quality of your life is directly related to the quality of your emotions. So would you like to expand on that and just share what you'd like to share on that? Yeah, look, I think it's interesting. So I love the science of emotions. And I have to say, that's probably where I first started of really understanding the science of emotions from a physiological perspective, a brain based perspective, the theories, the universal elements, the individual fingerprints that people bring to their emotions. And I think that's really fascinating. And I, I absolutely believe that quote, the quality of your life is direct, rela directly related to the quality of your emotions, because if I am having a bad day because I'm grumpy or I'm stressed or I'm anxious or whatever you, it's going to affect the quality of my life, the quality of my relationships, the quality of my communication, all sorts of things. So for me, although we focus on positive emotions from a positive psychology perspective, you'll know when we talked about that unit and we spent the time on that, we also um, investigated all of the or many emotions. So the whole range of emotions mm -hmm about what's the importance of emotions and, and what are they there for? And you will know, and I, I always use this uh, sort of quote, is emotions are data, they're information, they're trying to tell us something. And I think that's, again, really important is if I'm feeling anxious, anxiety is an emotion. It's just data, it's information, it's trying to tell me something. If I ignore that data, I'm probably going to have trouble with anxiety. But if I can learn from that data, what's it trying to tell me and manage and handle that data, then I'm probably not going to have challenges. So for me, managing your emotions day to day, and I don't mean suppressing or controlling, I mean, genuinely managing your emotions, experiencing those emotions, noticing them, understanding them, um, can be so helpful for us just to get through the day to day of why do I feel nervous right now? Why do I feel anxious right now? Why do I feel excited right now? What's going on for me? And knowing what emotion is appropriate in which situation and what I need to do to harness those emotions to help me. I think that's such a powerful thing. And I I noticed that we we kind of teach it in kindergarten or something, you know, where with the smiley face, the angry face, the happy face, <laughs> or the, the angry, the sad, the smiley, whatever. And then we kind of forget about yeah. it and wonder why human beings have well-being issues or mental health <laughs> issues or various other issues because we don't deal with those emotions. <laughs> no, it is fascinating because I'm I'm in the middle of doing the uh, mood meter homework ah, and checking in at least you know four times a day on my you know how on my mood my my feelings and my emotions and you know it's it's very helpful because it's asking you know what are you doing. Are you alone or with someone, your environment, and then prompting you, what do you think is you know, making you feel this way? And you see these patterns after a while. And Brilliant. yeah, it's going to be very helpful data, as you said. And you'll, I imagine in the future, I'll be able to think, well, I'm going to be doing this activity and it looks like I, I find it makes me anxious. So at least I'll be aware of that. And then I can you use some of this uh, positive psychology to, to handle those future situations. And then if I find myself always happy and cheerful around people, well, <laughs> I know what to do to become happy and cheerful. I, I go and catch up with friends or, you know, meet new people. So yeah. I think that's the powerful thing about that. And I have to admit, I do that exercise on myself um, at least once a year, sometimes more where I man measure my mood for a <laughs> couple of weeks and I see what happens and, and I think it's so valuable because sometimes we just go through life not actually paying attention to the things that brings us moments of joy or moments of gratitude or moments of anxiety. And to your point, when you notice patterns is when it gets really interesting. It's yeah. like, well, I could just stop doing that and put myself in those situations <laughs> or I can't stop doing that. So I've got to figure out how to manage those situations. Yeah, very helpful. And it, it sort of, I think it also highlights the um, importance of, yeah, being obviously aware or mindful, which we'll, we'll touch on in a minute. But I wanted to tie in Ikigai because uh, Ikigai was defined by this wonderful lady I told you about who I like to refer to as the mother of Ikigai. 
and she defined it, you have your ikigai sources, and then you have ikigai Khan, and Khan is, you know, perception, awareness, or feeling. And she, she made this point that ikigai is something you feel. It, it, it's what makes you feel that life is worth living. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, this emphasis on feeling rather than um, achieving or being successful or um, all these things we, we tend to value or we're sort of encouraged to value in society. We, we sort of don't uh, look at our emotions enough. And if we do, you know, it's not always um, sort of encouraged in a positive way. Um, like, oh, you're, well, you're emotional. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's interesting you say that because many organisations measure engagement. And sometimes um, I often do a keynote on this. Um, of, it's called basically you can't have engagement without emotion. Because if you think about it, people measure engagement, but they don't realize the value of emotion. But you can't possibly be engaged. <laughs> it's a feeling. I feel engaged. Well, there's emotion. And to your point, absolutely. If we don't understand those sources of emotions and the feeling that we experience, yes, we can keep achieving. But if you're not actually enjoying the journey, if you're not leveraging various things that bring you those moments of joy, sometimes, and we see this all the time with um, people in the media, for instance, that achieve really amazing things and earn loads of money, et cetera. And then we see their well-being just falling apart because if we're not paying attention to the feelings, what's the point in yeah. achieving those sorts of things?